All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm just going to do 12 in a row. Okay, here we go. We'll get a good one. Okay. Here we go. We Like Dota is brought to you by our patrons like Flazon. Find out how to help support the show at welikedota.com and follow the links to the Patreon. We Like Dota, episode 57, starts now. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to We Like Dota, the internet's casual Dota 2 podcast. I'm Brian Sabonyinger, and joining me this afternoon is Jared Clyde Frog Pedersen. What's going on, Jared? Hey, Brian. How's your afternoon? Pretty good. Um, I'm coming off of a uh, very, very busy two weeks, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and this is kind of crossing the finish line okay. uh, tonight. So I'm very excited to. Congratulations uh, across the finish line? Across the that finish line absolutely that's a very exciting time yes it's fi- the finish line yes uh jared also <laughs> joining us right now at this current time is senior executive producer uh cheeks of flapping hello cheeks hello brian I'm, i too am glad that you're crossing the finish line break that tape buddy that's right absolutely that's right uh ben is not joining us yeah unfortunately he's a little under the weather today and uh, the weather is under pretty much everybody it's uh, snowing out like crazy. Oh, my gosh. It snows every Sunday here in Ohio. It's, I don't know what's going on. It just keeps getting colder, too. I don't know what's going on, but Ben said that, uh, I think he said he felt like bristleback. Was in his throat. Was in his throat, correct. Is how, is how he worded it. Which is a very apt description, because bristleback has the, the quil- viscous nasal goo. The viscous nasal goo, and also mm. the quill spray. Right, yeah. To so indicate scratchiness. Scratchy throat. Correct. Quill spray. Viscous nasal goo. Which, it makes a lot of sense. Which actually. leads you to Warpath. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and also, right. and also, bris- a bristly back. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Sure. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, guys, let's uh, let's get into our newest segment that we have. We're gonna call it Dota Feeling. So I'm gonna play this. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, look at it go! Look at it. Jeeks, I'm going to let you explain Dota Feelings because it was your idea. Well, <laughs> Dota Feelings is just kind of a, a place for us to come and share how Dota has made us feel. We're not necessarily talking about victories or losses. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're talking about the general feeling. Why do we play Dota? Why do we want to feel this way? Uh, <laughs> is it self-hate? Is it? Do we feel as though we need to be punished? Or <laughs> do we really just like to work really hard mm. towards nothing? Yeah. Yeah, so well, that's kind of where Dota feelings is coming from. Well, we decided to drop who'd you play because we found we're kind of starting to, for better or for worse, drop into a kind of a pattern of playing the same heroes, kind of figuring out who we like, who we're good on, that sort of thing. And it was starting to turn into kind of the same old, same old. Right. So so we didn't want to really hear about how you played Marana every week is what it boils down to. Well, I haven't played Marana in two weeks. Right, mm-hmm. but I'm no. I think it's actually been six days. I think if I if my boat, <laughs> Dota buff is. But see, that's boring. We don't want to know about that anymore. Exactly. We want to know how you feel. Yeah. Well, cheeks. How does how has Dota made you feel this week? Well, the last week Dota made me feel real bad. Uh, I got into a couple of games, and even when I was playing with friends, I was just feeling apathetic. Mm. So I I took a week off from Dota. I had a Dota break. Wise decision. And played some other games. Uh, and you know that most games are power fantasies. Mm. That it's kind of interesting, right. you know. Yeah. It's like you and and you usually like achieve something or make some sort of progress. And I suppose maybe Dota's like that for a few people, but generally not for me. It's not really a power <laughs> fantasy. If anything, it's a it's a punishment. And so it was good to take a week off and just pretend I was in power of something. And right. you know, so I played some some Far Cry with Ben and did the thing, you know, where we both got on elephants and I put C four on his elephant without telling him and then <laughs> rode off and then blew it blew him and his elephant up. And that made me feel empowered powered. Right. Empowered. Good feelings. Empowered. Yeah, good feelings. And uh, you know, shot him in the butt with arrows and you know, that sort of stuff. Blowing up Ben's <laughs> elephant would also make me feel empowered. It was pretty good. It was pretty funny. He didn't even see it coming. He, he was a little confused. And then he was a little angry. Never saw it coming. Then he let it go. Yeah. So. 
I can see that making so, me angry. Yeah. But that was, you know, and so now I've come back to it this week, and I'm feeling a little refreshed having taken a break from it. Good. And I've been getting into it, and I feel like it's made my game a little bit better okay. taking that time off. Why do you think that's made your game better? Do you think you're more patient or more uh, more uh, empathetic towards others? Or Well, I think, you know, it's like if you play for, oh, you know, for, for such a long amount of time, a long game, you kind of get locked into the way that you play it. Right, and so right. when you take break, you kind of, it, I think it kind of opens up the creativity of your play style and mm. stuff. Okay. So it makes you open to trying some new things. So this week I did a little bit of trying some new things, like trying to play some cores and stuff in, in solo cube pub matches, which, you know, didn't oh. work. But it didn't discourage <laughs> me. I wasn't discouraged. I was like, okay, I see why this isn't working. And that's fine. Cheeks playing core <laughs> is a unprecedented move. So you must have really yeah. been in dire straits there. Uh, no, I, I don't know. I mean, they just, yeah, I, I went for it, but then no one was backing me up. So I was like, yeah. well, this is a, a solo pub match. So, you know, what should it, what, what was I supposed to expect? Usually what happens to me is I put myself in dumb positions <laughs> and like get myself killed, which is the correct response. Just let me die. But then I yeah. just blame it on nobody following me. You know, yeah. And no, saying, oh, I, I don't have any help. Team, team. Well, well, it's interesting kind of coming from that position because, you know, usually I play a support and typically the carries are always mad every time they die saying yeah. that you didn't support them. You know, so it's interesting kind of to turn the tables on it. And I was like, oh, yeah, he wasn't really begging. Yeah, he wasn't really reading my mind. And I was like, well, should I expect him to read my mind? No, Absolutely. he's a person. He doesn't have telepathic power. <laughs> right. He's communicated a little better. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, Jared, how about you? Um, How did Dota make you feel this week? Well, this week specifically made me feel pretty good. Oh. Because I actually got a couple wins in. You did? And I felt good about that. How many wins did you get in? I uh, played two games, and wow. I got two wins. That's a good week for you, Jared. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. So. How many bot matches did you win? Um, Like three, okay. but I mean, you know, I'm just messing around. I play. always forget that you play bot matches a lot. Well, it's because I can quit them right away. Right. Yeah. And I, I don't want. I don't want to abandon Kane. In case I, the, I don't want to be that guy. Right. Oh yeah, I don't want you to be that guy either. In yeah. case you know, because you have the baby grill. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I have no idea. She sometimes naps for twenty minutes. She sometimes naps for mm -hmm. an hour and a half. So yeah. I mean, it's just it's hard to tell. Right. But yeah, uh, two so, actual games. So you you won two actual games. What made yeah. them so victorious, Jared? Um, I think it's because I stuck to what I'm good at, and we've, we've identified that I, for some reason, no idea why, but I, I, I get strength melee heroes. You're real good at them. I have no idea yeah. why this is. Um, it just, I think, I think a, a lot of it is that they, they tank up well, mm -hmm. so I can put myself in a bad position, and I don't necessarily die. Right. <laughs> Which so, is good. A lot, a lot more durability. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I, I, uh, I felt good, you know. Okay. I, I stuck in the wheelhouse. I played well, and yeah. it was good. It was have good. you have you ever played Bristleback, Jared? I haven't actually. Okay, I'm not sure if you would like him or not because he's so like heavily based on his abilities. I think. Right. Well, it's similar to Tide and... Hunter in the fact that you kind of spam like crazy. Yeah, it's fun that way. Yeah, yeah. That Quill Spray <laughs> does crazy amounts of damage. Oh yeah, it's real nice. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I, I like I like Bristle. Okay, Maybe I'll give him a shot. Yeah, but I, I've been uh, doing some bot matches on Clockwork, so oh that's yeah, the one I want to. I want to see some Clockwork play yeah. from you. So I'm excited about that. That hook shot is deceptively difficult to land. Yes, it is. Yeah, it travels very quickly. Surprising. It does. It really does. It's it really surprising. So fast. It's really surprising. Mm -hmm. And if you've if you've never really played Clockwork, his his cogs when he casts them, they're like instantaneous almost. Mm. But it's weird. I don't know. Yeah, it took me a while to get it figured out. Yeah, so you uh, you talking about clockwork and also your uh, your baby reminded me of what happened a couple days ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Friend of the show Thanos Nihil Nihilist mm -hmm. gave us, I gave me practically his entire Dota two inventory. What? Yeah. Whoa. Because he just wow. had a, he also. How did just, that make you feel? That made me feel loved, uh, loved, <laughs> and very gracious. Yes. <laughs> And okay, good. Stick well, with the theme. I believe him. Uh, <laughs> I, I believe he just had a. Well, I would assume his his wife slash girlfriend just had a baby, mm -hmm. and uh, so he still listens to his the show. Seed, his seed was spawned. Correct. 
but he uh, he's not playing as much Dota anymore, so he Understood figured that. he would give us his item collection to give away as giveaways, and uh, mm. or he said I could just bet him all away on Dota Lounge, which that feels irresponsible. <laughs> yeah, somewhat. So anyway, there's some, there's some <laughs> clockwork gear in there and, and yeah. all that. So uh, be ready for some item giveaways, folks. Yeah, in the future. Cool. So and big thanks oh, yeah. to, to Thanos Nihilus for for sending out. Our yeah, mind. yeah, yeah. It makes us feel Should good. Have. Yeah, it makes us feel real good. So that I gotta say, oh. go ahead. I also got a very warm feeling because Fawson, who happens to be a new patron of the show, yeah. also sent me a code for a Hearthstone pack just out of the blue. This Whoa, week. he sent you what? I mean, uh, code for a Hearthstone pack because he heard that I play Hearthstone. Oh, you can do that? Yeah. That's kind of neat. Apparently. How do you get so codes for Hearthstone packs? I have no idea, but he just sent me one. Wow. And I was like, okay. And I thanked him and it made me feel good. Because that was kind of the game I was playing when I was out of Dota. Yeah, that's a yeah. solid wow. game. That's a, that's a fun game. Yeah. It is fun. I like the building the deck. Maybe that was kind of what opened up my creative, mm, my creative mind a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Because, okay. you know, I like to mess around with trying different theme decks and stuff in that yeah. so yeah other Maybe than that i uh my my week in dota was very uneventful because i was working the whole time so not a lot of dota going on for me i did watch a couple games here and there i watched uh eg get beat by void boys in yeah. the mlg yeah well well they lost one of three games right yeah is that what it was so no i think it was a best of two. Oh, okay so one and one yeah, still i think is how that went yeah and I was I was just watching Dota Pit, and I gotta say their uh, production values very good. Yeah, they, they have had, the whole replay thing. Yes, that's incredible. Yeah, it's so nice. Yeah, even if it's Pimp Munkle that's doing it. Okay, very good, Pimp Munkle. He's he's very difficult to understand. His accent's very thick. Yeah, which is why he's doing production instead of casting. <laughs> right. Well. All right. Uh, so anyway, I think that's it for Dota feelings. Uh, Cheeks, we'll see you at the bottom of the show. We're gonna go ahead and move. Oh, hey, oh. can I can I can I say something really quick? I would love it oh, if you did. Okay. Okay. Uh, just so you know, as is tradition, we'll be giving away a uh, copy of a game today. Oh, to, uh, that's right. Via a drawing that can be entered by going to our uh, subreddit uh, slash r slash we like Dota. And uh, posting a question under the February and March Noobs Ask Noobs question thing. So uh, the game we're giving away today will be Magicka, which is a great sort of uh, Diablo meets you playing Invoker all the time. Kind of, <laughs> kind of adventure. That sounds fun. Action, action RPG thing. But it's got a really good sense of humor. Yeah. Sounds intimidating and, uh, to me. It's, no, it's, it's delightful. It's actually really fun. Playing it's the keyboard. Like cartoony, but, yeah. Playing but the keyboard lots of the piano. Ends. <laughs> exactly. So no, it's it's a lot of fun. It might. Who knows? It might actually transfer to good uh, invoker play. I'm not really sure. Yeah, you know. I know that uh, Bunny Data's or Bunny <laughs> Bunny Data Bunny will typically uh, let his his son play uh, Magicka, mm. and so I'm assuming that that means he's grooming him to be like an expert invoker player. Oh, this could be the the legendary seventh member of Noob's Aspects. It could be. It could be our invoker. We can call in Bunny's son know, we'll whenever see. we need an invoker mid. <laughs> exactly. Invoker stand in. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I need an invoker. Oh, we need a support invoker. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, that that's uh, that sounds great. Cheeks, do you have anything else for us? No, no. That was just, that was the main thing I wanted to make people aware of. So, All so right. post your questions to those people who are in the chat. Uh, go ahead and do that if you're interested in being entered for a drawing for Magica. All right, that sounds great. Uh, we're going to move on to the news, Cheeks, and we'll see you at the bottom of the show. We'll see you yes, you will. <laughs> to read the future, I need entries. All right, Jared, let's talk about the news. <laughs> Fine, Brian. Jeez, okay. okay. So here in the news, Jared, um, <laughs> tell me about this. The Summit 3 was announced. Yeah. The tournament from Beyond the Summit. Qualifiers actually start today. Well, no, excuse me, excuse me. Pre qualifiers actually start today. The pre, yesterday. The pre qualifiers start today. Yeah. So <laughs> he had this big long thing about how can can first off, can we agree on two things? Yes. One, they're starting to become a little star laddery. Yeah, it seems a little soon. This is the second one between the internationals. Well, I th well they're trying to I think part of it is the cycle, right? Because Right. I think now they're do. Are they doing like a six month cycle now? I think so. Okay. I think I'm. I think I'm okay with that. 
as long as they get on a, like just a six month cycle, instead of doing like one every two four months, four months, three months, four months, something like that. Because it just ended in December, right? Yeah, it's too soon. Well, first off, the qualifiers for the last one spanned almost two months. Okay, I think that's what yeah. it was. It's like it was at least six weeks. It was a really right. long time, right? So for that, they cut down the qualifiers. They limited the amount of teams that are for the qualifying. summit three. Yeah, mm-hmm. that are going to be like on the qualifying phase. Yeah, but they added this another phase. They're calling a pre qualifier. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. So there's actually more teams involved now. So it's just a qualifier with another name? Yeah, there's a qualifier for the qualifier. <laughs> Sounds fair. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So each one of their qualifier phases, they, they have uh, one, two, three, four regions, of course. So China, Americas, Europe, and Southeast Asia. Yeah. There's eight teams going to be in each one of the qualifiers. So let's let's. But, but then there's eight teams that are in the qu- pre qualifiers, and two from each of those regions get put into the qualifiers. Okay, so there's eight teams from each region in the pre qualifiers, <laughs> and eight teams in the actual qualifiers. Right. So they're doing like it looks like there's two wild card slots basically exactly. for each for the qualifier for each region. Yeah. So each one of the regions has like six teams that are invited to the qualifiers. Le- and then Leviathan was invited to the American qualifier. Well, who else are you gonna? Summoner's Rift, come on, man. That's Demon's team, right? Yeah, but you know, I don't even know who's on that team besides Demon. I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think they know. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> you know who I saw stand in for him the other day? Who's that? It was Arteezy. <laughs> it was, um, jeez. Oh, it, it was something crazy. Like it was just the weirdest combination of players I've ever seen. Weird. Yeah, yeah. So I don't. So anyway, the, the qualifiers. Yeah. So there's pre qualifiers, then qualifiers. There are pre qualifiers actually started February twenty sixth. Excuse me. So that was Friday. Yeah. Um, they run the 26th through March 28th. So these pre-qualifiers run for over a month. Yeah. So what's going What's going on here? Like, <sighs> That's just a lot of Dota, man. So they said it was going to be streamlined, but they're making it less streamlined. Well, yeah, I think so. <laughs> it would seem that way. It seems that way, that's for sure. So how many teams are actually going to wind up in the main event then? In the main event, there's going to be eight now instead of six. Oh. So at, at their actual a, LAN... Do they have to get a new house for this? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. Because, it, and the thing is, I don't know how they're going to structure the, the actual LAN finals now if they're going to have eight teams. It's going to be a little different. Yeah, but, they'll figure something out. It'll yeah, be just I'm sure fine. it'll be fun. So. But I can say that I have thoroughly enjoyed each Summit event thus far. I would agree with that, yeah. They, they've been very good... Um, the production quality is always pretty high. Yeah. Um, they always are doing something a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, the first, the first summit was that the one where they introduced the. Uh, uh, no, that was during TI qualifiers that they had the uh, fight recap that they. Oh yeah. That they did. No, I think they did that for the first summit. I think. I don't know. Well, either way, but yeah. Anywho. It, yeah, always an entertaining tournament. It, if we ever hosted a tournament, it would be like that. Absolutely. Not that we're going to host a tournament. No way in hell. Yeah. So, Or at least a land tournament. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. But, yep, they have a you know, new compendium, obviously. Um, the base prize pool is $100,000. Mm-hmm. Which I think that was the last one as yeah. well. You said that they're doing a compendium. What's going on with the compendium? Well, of course, you know, you get hats. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you get hats with it. Yeah. But I see getting... here twenty percent from all Summit Three compendium sales go to the prize pool. So that's was twenty five last time. So okay, ten sure. percent from all pocket. treasure of the frigid beyond. They have a new uh, treasure chest. 10% now this of those this I like that it. they separate them like this. Honestly. Yeah, I like that as well because I, I I have to be honest with you. I don't know if I'll spend ten bucks on the compendium, but I, I'll probably buy a treasure chest. I'll buy a treasure chest. Yeah, they have some pretty cool sets here. Yeah, um, specifically they have one for Lashrac. And it looks ridiculous. It's uh, kind of cool. You guys definitely need to check this out. I it's, like I like the colors on it, but he looks all like thorny. Yeah, like leafy. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I kind of dig it. No, it's good. I, I mean, it's good. But um, anyway, so yeah, just the summit three is coming. Um, yeah, look out for that, folks. It's gonna be crazy. I'm probably not gonna watch the pre qualifiers. I'll probably pay attention for some of the qualifiers, but. I'll yeah. most definitely watch 
the land finals, of course. Yeah. Because they're always so entertaining and just just a lot of fun, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting. Mm-hmm. Um how do you feel about a team like Navi being invited to directly to the qualifier phase, but a team like NIP that has been tearing up the scene, um, just being dele- relegated to the pre qualifiers. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. That's an interesting. That's an interesting choice. I feel like Navi's they're almost on the merit of their names, right? Who's yeah, even going to be their offlaner? Yeah, I don't like, know. Have, they, have you heard anything about that with Funnick leaving? No. I think he's getting married. I think that's why. Yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah. yeah, good for him. Yeah, good but for yeah. him. Uh, but there's two married guys in the room right now. Not, we're not married to each other, but we uh, both have wives. Yes, tr- correct. We, correct. Both, we, we both have wives. <laughs> and you can still have fun, you know, in the competitive gaming scene. Uh, we're not exactly in well, the competitive no. gaming scene. But we are I would a love part to of, we're a part of the industry. I guess, kind of. We're a cog in the industry, absolutely. We're like on the outskirts of it, but yeah. Hopefully, getting press passes to TI five. Hopefully, and we have uh, we have healthy healthy relationships with our wives and healthy yeah, healthy, healthy lives enough and yeah healthy enough. I made a baby. Yeah, you did. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to the next item here. Yeah, so we also had another debacle. Always debacles, Jared. It's always fun. Uh, Union Gaming, they got caught screen. Uh, was it basically like Twitch? Streaming their own game. I believe they call it stream sniping. Stream sniping. I believe. I always called it chain screening or screen cheating. Screen cheating, yes. <laughs> when you're playing Mario Kart 4 player. Yeah. On your N64. Or Not you... Double Dash. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking Double Dash. We always did it when we were playing Half-Life at my dad's office. Oh, yeah. And we were like at computers across from each other. Right, right. Like, <laughs> Who's that? What you doing over there? Where are you? So Union Gaming, quit camping. Union Gaming, they were caught stream sniping during a match in the Canada Cup. Yeah. So basically, yeah. they they pulled up a Twitch stream of their own game, and uh, while one of the guys was dead, he was checking it out to see what the other team was doing. Well, here's here's my question about this: Aren't the streams two minutes behind? Yeah, they are. I mean, what kind of information well, are you two. gonna are you gonna glean from a stream that's two minutes behind? I don't know, but why why else would you be doing it? Yeah. I mean, obviously, they've at least got an advantage once because of it. Right. Otherwise, they wouldn't try to do it. Yeah. And here's the other thing. They've been caught doing some other kind of sketchy things. They have? What What else have they done? They uh, A tournament a couple months ago, they were in the in the grand finals. Mm-hmm. I think it was against E-Hug. Don't okay. quote me on that one. But uh, in, I think it was the third or fourth game. Uh, they had a pause. Uh, the other team had a pause because of something. Um yeah, and then Union unpaused it without getting the okay from the other team, and ended up getting a first blood instead of typing G question mark. Right. Yeah. Waiting for the the confirmation that the other team was ready. Right. So a little sketchy there. You know, yeah. that's more of like a sportsmanship thing than a cheating thing. Were they Were they punished or anything? Like I was, believe they were punishment. Okay. I believe that they had to forfeit some of their winnings from oh, the tournament. Okay. Well, they're from, are they a South American team? I believe so. I think, I, I know that they're from South America somewhere. I don't want to say the country specifically, but. Yeah. Yeah, I know that they're somewhere down there. Okay. Um, but yeah, then they also had another incident where they were caught, I think, doing the, kind of the same thing where somebody would pause early in the game and then they would catch them on Twitch, like where the lanes, lanes were set up and things. Oh, uh, it's shady. Yeah, just kind of shady stuff. Yeah. So, in response, this was during, like you said, the Dota 2 Canada Cup. Uh, they were uh, instantly booted from the tourney. Right. And uh, hence from there, they also uh, have been removed from a couple other tournaments. Summit 3 specifically. Um, and the MLG Pro Gamer. 360 No Scope, <laughs> as you have written in here. Yes. <laughs> Hashtag 420 360 No Scope. Dang right. So, uh, but yeah, that's the... Uh, we could have saw him in Columbus, but no. Yeah. This is surprising because the Dota 2 Canada Cup is not a large tournament by any means. No. So, I mean, maybe they thought they could get away with it easier during that tournament or something. Maybe, yeah. Or, yeah, I don't know. But it is nice to see It is nice to see the Dota 2 Canada Cup have a response. I'm a little surprised some of the other tournaments are kind of rallying around this and banning them from 
Well, here's the thing, though. They, tournaments. They have, like I said, we there there are other things that are a little more shady about it. Yeah. Um, the organization in the past. So I think that just they're wanting to come down with a hammer, you know? Yeah. So you're thinking it's maybe kind of a, a grow. It's been a growing snowball. Yeah. For them. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just one of those things where. You know, one thing led to another, led to another, and not necessarily anything that they've been 100%, you know, proven to be cheating or right. anything like that, yeah. but a lot of shady stuff. Yeah, okay. So, it's good to see that, you know, tournaments are responding, and... Yeah, I just get worried about some of these other tournaments' response, because I think this kind of happens in... In competitive gaming and even in games in general, there tends to be a uh, very heavy uh, crowd consensus for hating things, I guess. Groupthink? You know? Groupthink, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. So, I don't know. Whatever. I, I'm i not saying it's the wrong decision by any means. Yeah. And I think I kind of think it's the right decision, but I just, yeah, I just get worried that uh, some other tournaments are just kind of jumping on the hate bandwagon. Yeah. No, that's fair. But maybe uh maybe a nice league organization could help solve those things out. Yeah, you know? You know? Yeah. That would be real nice. We should start that, Jared. Yeah, we really should. Oh, that'd be a horrible. That sounds like the last thing I'd want to do, like make all those rules and We're already bad with administration oh, stuff. Hate it. Shout out to Last Town and Bunny. Thanks for being <laughs> awesome administrators. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh so so it's, Speaking of great administrators, Jared, I hear Merlini has a new team. Yeah, one of the worst names I've ever heard. Uh, the Stardust Crusaders is what they're calling themselves. Is uh, David Bowie their mid player? I hope to God. Okay. Good Lord. Um, but yeah, so we've kind of talked about it in the past, and it's been hinted in the past, um, but we saw something a little more official from a, a Reddit post about Merlini actually forming a team. Okay. Um, so it's going to be with TC and Fogged, which is going to be really interesting. Um, both, yeah, I think I like that. I like it too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they're going to be going with, uh, Amanib, which is, I think an NAL player. He's been kind of a serial stand in. Okay. And, uh, clairvoyance mm-hmm. who was the, uh, um, C9 coach, I think, or okay. like something along those lines, but he was involved with the C9 team yeah. in the past. So that is an interesting team comp because Merlini TC and even fog to a certain extent, three very they all have very uh, wide knowledge of the game. Absolutely. So it's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting to see how yeah. it how it pans out. Or not not that competitive players don't have wide knowledge of the game, but like they're very uh, analytical about the game. Yeah, they're I thinkers. Think. Thinkers. Yeah. Yeah. Which that makes it sound bad too, but you know what I'm talking about. I think so. Yeah. It's... A lot of teams tend to have just one of those people. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm curious to see. Merlini in a in an actual competitive scene, and like well, what he can do. Yeah, because yeah. I watch his stream often, and it's the dude is just so stinking smart he when knows, it comes to Dota. Yeah, he knows what's going on, and his his execution's pretty much there too. Yeah, so I mean, so what's he doing with Beyond the Summit then? I think he is kind of stepping down. Well, because they hired um, Coddle Guy full time. Yeah, so. And I, I'm assuming I, that they're gonna that they're you know saying that he's not gonna be there for a while, right? And I I really like Coddle Guy. I think he's a good caster. But agreed, Merlini brings just really great analysis to the game as well. Yeah, no, I think he can explain things well. He can explain it in a way that even if you have just just a base knowledge of the game, you can understand why something is important. Right. So it. He had, yeah, he and there's a couple other casters that can do that pretty well. Like Blaze, I think, is another one that's really good at that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's definitely one of those that. I, uh, I'm not sure what made me just think of this, Jared, but I was watching um, uh, Puri and Flax's stream. <laughs> okay. Which is a great stream to watch. It, it sometimes... As long as you don't have um, young ears around, because there's a lot of uh, profanity. Right. A lot of profanity. Well, there's a lot of profanity that comes out of your mouth as well, Jared. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but you you at least have control over it. Yeah, sometimes, most times, unless we're actually playing the game. But anyway, on uh, yeah, on Peary and Flax's stream, they were having kind of a try hard night like we do every once in a while, and I uh, I think he's like a high two k slash low three k MMR player. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, that made me feel good about myself. Yeah, yeah, that's all I have to say. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, he's not he he's not a, unobtainable for somebody like me to get to that point. Oh yeah, if I if I actually could game. Yeah, often. Yeah, he's he's in the he's in the limelight. I believe he has children. Mm-hmm. And uh, he has a Mrs. Flax. Has a Mrs. Flax, and he streams. You know, he has a healthy. I would assume he has a healthy relationship with all those things. So yeah, I hope so. For Still keeping sake. it real. So yeah. it is possible, folks. It can it can happen. But yeah, speaking of uh, other new teams, we have a uh, Sing Sing officially got another another group together as well. They're calling themselves Burden United. Burden United. Yeah. All right. I don't know. That's a dumb name. It is. So is Stardust Crusaders, though. Yeah, I don't know where they come up with this crap. Everybody should just be called Team Fire and go over with it. Like, we should have 12 Team Fires. Team Fire is not bad. Which one are we talking about? <laughs> like, t- <laughs> touche. As far as the team name goes, it's not bad. No, there's definitely been worse. But uh, Sing Sing, it looks like he's going to actually be able to play mid again, which is, I think, good. He... The uh, exploits with Tinker, putting him on support, just didn't work out. He definitely, I think, needs to be on that mid roll. So, yeah. Um, some other... Looks like he's going to be with My Nuts, of course. Yes, of course. Um, come With Me, Sexy Bambo, from Team Zephyr. Remember him? And ex-Evil Geniuses, correct? I believe so, yeah. yeah. So, Bambo's been around a while. Come With Me's been kind of a serial stand-in as well. Yeah. Um. And then some guy named Necroman, which I have no idea who that is. Necroman. I thought that was... I think that's how you say it. Oh. I'm ashamed. I thought it was... I thought it said Negro Man. <laughs> yeah, you should be a little ashamed. I'm a little ashamed of that. Well, a Q looks a lot like a G. Jared. It does. It does. Okay. So... Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically um, what's been going on in Dota this week. Mm-hmm. There's not really much going on. Yeah, not a ton. It's going to start picking up pretty soon here. Yeah. We still have uh, the New Bloom patch going on. I'm not sure how much longer that lasts for, but I'm going to try and get some more uh, Year Beast brawls in. Yeah, I hope I could actually play one yeah. just to see what it's like. Yeah, it's fun. Ben claims it's pay to win, which it. I'm not saying it's not, but look, I have the Crystal Maiden Arcana, and I've played three of those now, and I've not won a single one yet. Yeah, and you get like 50. 50- uh, a lot of points for that, like right, five thousand or something. Yeah, but it, they actually don't go super far in upgrading your beast. Okay, because you can use the points on like abilities that the beast has. Right. So like Thunder God's Wrath, oh, yeah. heal the flat cannon thing, <laughs> right? Teleport that kind of stuff. But you can also like level up your beast as well. Okay. To give it like different stats and different abilities and stuff. And you can get, a, I think it's a level two beast pretty easily, but, but if you want to go like level three, it ha, like it's a bigger pool than what I have points for. So that kind of makes sense. Yeah. I mean, so it's not bad. Um, so yeah, new beast still going on or new bloom. They just released some new cosmetics yeah. uh, for the new bloom. Mm-hmm. Some of them are a little goofy looking. Didn't yeah. really care for the Templar assassin one. There wasn't much to it. Yeah, which I usually really like the Templar Assassin hats. Yeah, they're weird. They're, they're a little weird. weird. Yeah. But yeah, new hats again. Um, the so Wraith King. It. What do you think about that Wraith King one that, where he has like the thing coming out of his stomach? Uh, it's not my favorite. I didn't mind it. Yeah. yeah. Kind of in the same boat. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, in other news this week, uh, the net neutrality ruling yeah. that the FCC gave out was very favorable to a... Uh, to a consumer-friendly internet. So, so, long story short, guys, good, good work there. Yeah, for good. those of you who are partic- participated in the whole net neutrality thing, yeah. trying to get that passed. I know Last Talon was very instrumental in getting uh, getting us on board and getting some of the other uh, community members on board and trying to uh, to get a favorable ruling for us consumers out there. So, so that's good. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Go U.S. government. Go U.S. government. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Jared, what do you say we move on to the Hero of the Week? Let's do it, Brian. I'll wait for it. Come on. I'll wait for it. Jared, it's not Still playing. waiting for it. You're tougher than I thought. Come along. Feeding time. Have a cookie. Meepo. More Meepo. I love you guys. <laughs> oh, I love you. Jared, the hero of the week is Axe. That's exciting. The hero of the week is Axe. 
Uh, okay, so Axe is a melee strength hero, Jared. My wheelhouse. Your wheelhouse. Have you played Axe? You know what? I actually have never played a game on Axe. You actually have not? I actually have not. <laughs> yeah. That's great. <laughs> so he's he's kind of known as being the only quote-unquote true tank in the game because of some of his abilities. Yeah. He's the only one that can cause others to attack him. Yeah. Um, the only one with a real taunt, if you yes. will. Yes, but we're calling tanks. I, I When I hear tank, I think of somebody who just kind of gets real strong as yeah. far as HP goes. Well, like the uh, heavy weapons dude from... Uh, the uh, heavy. Yeah, the heavy from... From Team Fortress 2, or exactly. the heavy weapons guy from Team Fortress Classic. Yes, either way. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what I think of mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Uh, okay, Jared, let's let's talk about his abilities, and then we'll kind of talk about his role and uh, how you play him and all that kind of stuff. Sure thing. Okay, so his Q is called Berserker's Call. Axe taunts nearby enemy units, forcing them to attack him while he gains bonus armor during the duration. Right. Radius is 300. The armor bonus, Jared, 40. That's so crazy. The duration is two two seconds at level one and three point two seconds at level four. Sixteen second cooldown at level one, ten second cooldown at level four. Affects invisible and spell immune units. So there's that. All right. Keep that in mind. All right. His W is called Battle Hunger. Enrages an enemy unit, causing it to be slowed and take damage over time until it kills another unit or the duration ends. Axe gains movement speed for each unit affected with battle hunger. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that's interesting. So that stacks, right? Yeah. Sounds like it, yeah. Cast range is 750. Damage per second is 16 at level 1, 40 seconds at level 4. Move speed slow is 12%. Self move speed bonus is 12%. So is that if you cast it on yourself? That's what it sounds like. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. The duration is 10 <laughs> seconds. Cooldown is 20 seconds at level 1, 5 seconds at level 4. So you can get two stacks of this. Yeah, it looks like it. At level 4. Duration. So Axe is granted 12% movement speed for every affected enemy. This affects stacks. Yeah. Okay, so that's... I don't know. This doesn't seem like a very great ability to me. I mean, it's nice for the move speed bonus, I right, guess. Right, yeah. And it's a dot, so I mean that's always a good thing. That's true. It keeps you from blinking away. Yep. So are you using it mostly for that then? I think so. Or is it just maybe a little bit of everything? Yeah, I mean it, Okay. At level four it does four hundred damage. Okay. Over the course of ten seconds. Right. Yeah. So I mean that's not exactly nothing. Yeah. And it's you're gonna get movement speed from it, which yeah, that's true. He needs chase, Mm -hmm. so... Yeah. Okay. Well, his E is a passive called Counter Helix. When it's hacked, Axe performs a Helix counter attack, dealing damage to all nearby units. Radius is 275. Proc chance is 20%. Damage is 100 at level 1. 205 damage at level 4. Cooldown is 0.45 seconds at level 1. And 0.3 seconds at level 4. Woof. That's pretty good. (sighs) This is what makes X one of the most annoying heroes to play against. Yeah. Uh, any Anybody that has any sort of, like, attack that is high base attack, so, like, if you're thinking, like, a Juggernaut or mm-hmm. even, like, a Lycan that in ultimate form gets a higher base yeah. attack, like, it, it just gets so annoying. Well, yeah. This is kind of the, you, you know, you pick him. This is why you pick X, yeah. You pick, you pick well, X. that and the ultimate, but yeah. yeah. But mostly for, well, and for his Q. You know, his Q and the counter helix kind of go hand in hand. Exactly, yeah. But that counter helix is so good against melee heroes. It's unreal. It's really good. So I guess if you just see the other team drafting a lot of melee heroes, you just pick Axe and you win. Right. And <laughs> right? The thing is, he can he can do he is the hero that does what we call creep cutting the best. Mm-hmm. So like taking the creep wave before it hits the tower. Yeah. So that your creep wave can then attack the tower. Yeah. And get that tower damage. We call it creep cutting. I believe the actual term is creep skipping. Yeah. Okay. Creep skipping. Yeah. Either way. But <laughs> whatever. You know, it's all he can. He can. It's e- all the same. Effectively, cut a creep wave in just a couple seconds at level three or something crazy like that. Yeah. And take and, almost no damage and really push that tower. It's crazy. It's it's super annoying. It's. Mm-hmm. 
Stink, stinking axe. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right, Jared. Let's move on to his ultimate. Right. The ultimate is called Culling Blade. Okay. Axe spots a weakness in strikes, instantly killing an enemy unit with low health or dealing moderate damage otherwise. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> moderate damage. So, yeah, basically it either kills them or really doesn't do much. Yes. When an enemy hero is killed with Culling Blade, its cooldown is reset, and Axe and nearby allied units gain bonus movement speed. All right. So I think we've all had this scenario. Well, okay, let me, let me go back to the scenario. Let me read the stats first. Cast range is 150. Kill speed bonus radius is 900. That's pretty good. That is good. The damage is 150, 250, or 300, which would be that moderate damage they're speaking of. Right. Which is true. Kill health threshold, level 1, 250. Level 2, 325. Level 3, 400. Uh, Kill move speed bonus is 40%. 40%. (laughs) Kill attack speed bonus is 40, and kill speed duration is 6. Uh, 75 second cooldown at level 1. Unless you actually get a kill. Right. 65 seconds at level 2 and 55 seconds at level 3. And with Ag Scepter, it decreases the cooldown, increases the kill threshold, and increases the duration of movement speed upon kill. Right. So basically, and, and this was just recently nerfed, luckily. Um, by about, I think by like 50 HP, is that right? Some uh, It was at least that much, yeah. yeah. But... So at level three with Ag Scepter, the kill threshold is 550, which right. is, that's, at at some levels, that's like half of a support's HP. Yeah, I mean. That's unreal. Yeah, when the Axe gets level 16 with an Ags, I mean, it's usually, if, if he's rushing Ags, you're probably looking at about 25, 30 minutes. A support like Crystal Main or somebody squishy like that or mm-hmm. Shadow Shaman. Yeah. I mean. You're not going to have over a thousand, maybe eleven hundred hit points at that point. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, <laughs> Jared, yeah. I can remember many games when we play against an axe. I remember one time having like an axe and an earth shaker when we were like all grouped up. Earth shaker blinks in, does his, uh, t- his, you know, his Fisher thing. Yeah. Does an echo slam. We all get super low on health. Axe comes in and, and just dunks four of us right yeah just gets like a quad kill like that and uh that freaking sucks but it's also very impressive right so one one of the interesting things to note about the culling blade too is it goes through things like uh dazzle's shallow grave oh does it yes oh boy so even if you have things like that on it it's still just annihilates people. The killing blow removes all buffs from the target unit before killing it, including usually unremovable buffs like Shallow Grave. Yeah. The killing blow ignores spell immunity and other any other kind of resistance. So this thing goes through BKB, of course. Why wouldn't it? But it does not go through Lincoln Sphere, I, I don't believe. Right. Yeah, it is blocked by Lincoln Sphere. Yeah. So he needs to throw the Battle Hunger or something on it before. Yeah. So one extra little click. Just just the one. Just the one. Just the click. So, okay, Jared, let's talk about how you play Axe, when you pick them, that sort of stuff. Yeah, so I think, we, I think we've kind of already discussed it a little bit, but if you're seeing your other team have heavy melee cores, Axe is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. You're going to have a good time playing Axe. Yeah. Um, again, if you're seeing against a Dazzle, he's a great counter for Dazzle because... Basically renders one of his most important skills, a shallow grave, useless. That's true, because you cast shallow grave when somebody's going to die. Exactly. And Axe says, not today, and kills them anyway. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. I mean, those are those are two of the times when I think it's really a good thing to do. Um, as like a laning thing, you can do pretty much anything you want with Axe. Yeah. Because he you know, can get that extra bonus armor. Yeah. He you has, can safe lane him. You can off lane him. You you could throw him in the mid. He can jungle pretty decently with some levels yeah. because I mean the counter helix just does so much work. Yeah. So it's he. I don't think execution is that difficult with X, but good execution. You know, like anything. Good execution. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm uh, sorry. Those are all these bad puns. Good lord. And we haven't spoken about one of the most fun things about having an X in the game. Is hearing axe. Yes. Axe reports. Bottom is missing. 
<laughs> it's it's pretty good. His it's voice good. is and, and it just it just makes sense like with the hero. Oh like, yeah. Yeah, I, I love it. I love his voice. And there's an axe announcer pack, I believe. There correct? is. There yeah. is, yeah. So okay. definitely should check that one out. Yeah. That's the one that I want to get that I haven't got. Well, and Axe is really good at initiation, I think. Yeah. Especially once he gets a blink dagger up. Um, that's such a good item on Axe because you can blink in, you do the Berserker's Call, and all of a sudden, it's kind of almost like a stun, really. Yeah. Because you blink in, you do the Berserker's Call, and all of a sudden, you know, three heroes are attacking Axe while everyone else can just attack them as they wish. Exactly. And Axe has 40 bonus armor, so they're not really doing too much damage. They're not doing a whole lot. And they're going to be taking damage because of the counter helix. Right. And if Axe builds a blade mail... They're going to be taking damage yeah. from that. It, it is difficult to land. The radius on it is only 300. So right. you do have to be pretty good at doing that. Yeah. But again, if you have a blink dagger, that shouldn't be too hard. Yeah. Theoretically. So, yeah, theoretically, right. Mm-hmm. So it's a... Uh, he's definitely... He's a fun hero to play. He's an annoying hero to play against. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think that uh, there's a whole lot to him. I, I think there's not a lot of depth to go into with X. Fittingly, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, I, and again, I, I, that's yeah. one of the things I love about this game is like it's just little things like this that make sense. Oh yeah, like Axe is you know a tank, and you know if you think about like just in games in general, tanks are normally not like, exactly like, the most intelligent of people or heroes or whatever. Yeah, high end heroes to play. Right. Yeah. So the fact that like his voice announcer pack just makes sense. Like, oh yeah, Axe reports. Axe reports, bottom is missing. Yeah, and I think... So we talked about one of his strengths is you kind of pick him when there's like a bunch of melee heroes or right, right, right. melee cores. But one of his big weaknesses is ranged heroes. Yeah. Uh, you know, especially if they can disable his blink dagger. Right. You know, uh, Or a drow get, ranger that can kite well. Yeah. Like anybody that has like a slow or anything like mm-hmm. that. Or a sniper, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A viper. The only thing you need to be cautious of, though, with Axe is if you are ranged and you have other melee heroes on your team, you sitting there right-clicking Axe down, while good, can proc his, proc his counter helix. Right. So be aware of that. <laughs> so you want to you get some stuns, you know, just to stun him and right. not worry about that counter helix. Well, even it goes through some stuns, doesn't it? The counter helix? I think it does. It procs during stuns. Does it? Are you serious? I'm pretty sure it does. I know it does during roots and things like that. Like Crystal Maiden's um, Frost, or whatever the one, her root. Yeah. It well, procs that, during that. Well, that's because that doesn't disa- That's not a stun. That right, it's a root. keeps you from right clicking and keeps I you from think moving. It's still, the spells still go through. Well, let's see. I don't think so. Dota 2 Wiki doesn't say anything about yeah, it. Yeah, okay. But I'm not saying that that's not. That's not the case, though. Right. I, I don't, I don't yeah. know either. I don't know either. So anyway, there's that. Uh, definitely kind of a flavor of the month pick right now. Yeah, he's, he's in a good place in the yeah. meta. I think that's because for a while, Juggernaut was super popular. Mm-hmm. And he's a good counter to Juggernaut. I well, think. again, yeah, because Juggernaut has that high base attack speed. Yeah. And that recently got nerfed. Yeah. But, well, his, his agility got nerfed. Yeah. But. Yeah, it's he's he's good. <laughs> yeah, I he's I, a fun hero for sure. Um, OK, let's talk about items on him, Jared. All right. So obviously, you know, the standard tangos and healing salves and that kind of stuff. Right. Um, but it's, I, it's, I think starting with a stout shield is really good. Well, especially since you're going to be in the front line, you're, you're wanting to get attacked with axe that's one of the things that like is a little counterintuitive right. yeah. compared to other heroes so you, you you're definitely wanting things like you said like that stout shield um uh, the the uh tranquil boots are great because they provide a little extra you know armor but then also you have the the passive regen that will come up yeah um and then building the things like like a vanguard does kind of make sense with him oh yeah Especially even now that you can build that into Crimson Guard. Absolutely. Crimson Guard is... I, I like Crimson Guard. When it makes sense on him. Absolutely. So, and then other things like that... Uh, Dude, that 40, great... 40 bonus armor from Berserker's Call in the early game. I know. That's unreal. That's so good. That's so unreal. And the, and the cooldown is so low. 
pretty low mana cost. I don't, I don't think you can necessarily skip Stout Shield because of it, but it's a good item. Right. It's a Or it's a good spell. Yeah. I mean, eventually he does get move into a little bit of mana problems mm-hmm. just because he has a really low in base intelligence and yeah. really low intelligence gain. But, so, so would you maybe go Power Treads on him instead of Tranquil Boots? I mean, you could, but Tranquils are just so good on him because of the health regen. Yeah. I mean, that's... But isn't he right-clicking a lot? He is. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, I mean, you can do the cute little boot drop. Right. As long as your boots don't get sniped. So, yeah, yeah, one of those things that you can do if you're jungling with him. Yeah. And you have the tranquils. You can drop your tranquil boots to not break the boots. Yeah. And then finish the camp, pick them back up, and then you can start regenning right away. Okay. So just be careful with that because your boots can get stolen (laughs) or denied. And then you're out a thousand gold, I think. Are there the uh, are. right? Are are there any items that you would consider must haves on Axe? A blink dagger. I think so too. It's so good on him. Yeah. Just to get off that blink berserker's call initiation. Right. Yeah. And and if you are going against a lot of melee cores like we were talking about, I think a blade mail makes so much sense on him. Yeah. Just because a it's gonna, you're going to get some extra mana because mm-hmm. it has the robe of the magi or whatever yeah. that's called. Um. But then the, just the return damage, it's just great synergy. Oh, yeah. It makes a lot of sense. And like a low a low HP support, you know, like with a big nuke like Lena or something like that, it's really going to discourage her from just nuking him down. Right. Real quick. So uh, one quick tip. If you have blade mail and you see Axe has blade mail, if you buy a BKB, the damage is not reflected back. That is true. So BKB, good item. BKB is a good item. Yeah. So there's that. <laughs> so blade mail. Uh, what else, Jared? I would think obviously like a heart of Tarask. It's always a good choice. Always really good. Um, and then other items. I mean, a Shiva's guard makes sense because you're gonna get more armor again. It's gonna up your mana pool. But then also it's gonna give you the the active from the Shivas, the slow from it, which is always great. And it helps out his mana pool quite a bit too. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, I uh, I think I think the Crimson Guard would be pretty good on him. Yeah, but absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's going to block physical damage, which again... It's situational, of course. Of course. But good item. Like anything. Right. Like anything. I think the Ag Scepter is... It's... Not it, as good as it was. Not as good as it was, but that's pretty good. That's a pretty quick insta-kill on Axe. Yeah, it it's really pretty is. nice. It really is. And it brings the cooldown, if you miss it, to six seconds. Exactly. So you can be a lot more liberal with it. Right. Um... And one of the cool things you can do with Axe, uh, if you use the console, you can change the vertical markers for the health bars mm, yeah. to the kill threshold of those, it. Those little, uh, yeah, the ha- those little hash marks. Yeah, yeah which are like uh, 200 mm-hmm. uh, hit, hit points normally. If you just make them to you know whatever the kill threshold is, 200, 325, 400, you can see instantly whether yeah. they're below that or not. That's a nice little tip. So. Mm-hmm. Something I saw somebody doing that's, yeah. that's kind of interesting. It was on that uh, crazy Axe infographic that was out there at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's from a couple couple weeks ago. The Axe infographic. The Axe infographic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, anything else with, with Axe, Jared? Uh, he's got a lot of cool cosmetics. Oh, a lot yeah. of Axe axes. Yeah. Those are really <laughs> crazy. Some of them are larger than Axe himself. <laughs> right. My favorite is the, the big scythe that you can get for him. Mm-hmm. I yeah, like that thing. The um, DAC immortal for him was kind of cool. It's like yeah, that it's little, like, it's like a claw thing that he puts on his shoulder. Yeah, it was interesting. It was interesting. Speaking of immortals, Jared, I still don't have that immortal Morana mount. Yeah, you'll get it eventually, I'm, brother. I'm torn up, Jared. I'm torn up. I know you talked about it every day. You talk I about know. it every day. I know I need it, Jared. No, I'm kidding. I speaking of Morana, I saw somebody posted on the uh, Dota Two subreddit. Yeah, yeah. There's some lady doing Morana cosplay for MLG Columbus. <laughs> Gonna have to get my picture with her. Yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. <laughs> I'll, I'll watch out for you. Instead of getting the chocolate covered pretzels from the girls shorty in shorts, shorty shorts. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Morana's a classy lady, Jared. Okay, Absolutely. anyway, Axe, uh, do we recommend, do not recommend? Absolutely recommend. I think that he's a great hero. I recommend as well. I'm going to give one of these, Jared. Yeah, these are definitely a buy. I like Axe. Good. He's fun. He is fun. Pain in the ass to play against, though. Absolutely. 
Do we ban him out when we draft? I have been recently. Okay. Who are, who's our go to bands when we when we play, Jared? Uh, right now, Axe. Axe. And um, depending, I mean, it depends on what we're thinking about doing from there. Is I mean, it's situational. We've we've evolved from just being like we don't know how to deal with these heroes. We hate right. them. We're gonna ban them instantly. So if I don't know who to ban right now, like just the two go to that I do are Axe and Phantom Lancer. Yeah, just because they're annoying. Yeah. If you ask Ben, though, Ben Ben thinks Phantom Lancer is weak. Yeah, I know he does. I, I don't necessarily agree with him. A well-executed Phantom Lancer is so annoying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think he's in an okay spot. Yeah, he's not as bad as he was. Yeah. That's for sure. Okay. All right, so there's that. Uh, let's see here. Jared, it's the time of the week where we move into noob knowledge. Oh. This is our, our new segment where we dispense whatever we're learning about in yes. Dota 2 to the masses. Absolutely. Now, as with everything else on the show, Jared, there's no actual guarantee whether this information is correct. Yeah, most of the time, uh, we do just talk out of our ass. So um, yeah. mm-hmm. this is us talking out of our ass and uh, basically doing it in a very... Uh, Informal way. Absolutely. This is to replace our item of the week segment. Yes. Because it was boring. Okay, Jared. So today I kind of wanted to talk about courier controls. Okay. Because we kind of joke about it, but it's kind of true. Ben Ben didn't know for a long time that you couldn't do a speed boost for the <laughs> flying courier. Right, yeah. Um, Which I think is funny, but at the same time, there's little things about the game that I didn't know that you could do. Yeah. And it's, it, it, it's, it's so true that there's... So many complexities with this game. Oh, yeah. The courier controls are a little cryptic, so we're going to talk about them here. So when All you right. select your courier, yep, yep, we're going to assume you have your courier upgraded to the flying courier. We're just going to assume that. Right, because after three minutes, it probably should be. Yeah. Isn't it four? Three. Okay. I kind of disagree with that, though. No. It's I, situational. I if, don't. If your team isn't using the courier, you, I would rather you buy wards or something first. And take them forever to get out to you? All right. Good point. (laughs) Anywho. Okay. So, courier controls. Yes. Assuming flying courier. Go. I like my courier controls, and I'm going to just kind of talk about how I have mine set up. Okay. Um, I'm not saying it's the best or the most efficient, but this this is what I got. Okay. All right. So, I have my courier select bound to F1. Okay. So, I hit F1, and I select the courier. If I hit F2, it tells the courier... Pick up my items, whether they're in my stash or actually on the courier, and bring them to me. Yes, deliver uh, items. Deliver items, yes. Uh, F3 is my speed boost, okay. which isn't as critical as it once was, once they changed around the cooldowns on the speed boost. Yeah, okay. They used to have a, longer co- a lower cooldown and a bigger speed burst, but they've changed it around to where it has a higher cooldown and just the base movement speed of the flying courier is much higher than it used to be. That is true. That okay. is true. All right. But there's also separate controls for the courier where you select it and it's bound to like QWE and R. Right. You know? the, the standard. Yeah. So accor- according to the default controls, the Q on the courier sends the courier back to base. So right. if the courier is out and moving about, you hit Q, it'll just right. run back to base. So first off, we, we want to tell people you should have your courier bound to something. To a hotkey. Yeah, yeah, you definitely want to have that done. Yeah. Um, just because, again, while, while we're going through this, you don't want to just click down, have to move your mouse to click down on the courier right. icon to select yeah. the courier. Because, yeah, exactly. You want to be using the keyboard as much as you can. Efficiency. Efficiency. And it is worth noting that you can select the courier and micro it. You can just kind of right click to move it around. Right, stuff. absolutely. So yeah, I mean, it, it, you can micro it like a hero. Yeah. Because I've had times where it's like, oh, crap, this guy's going to get killed. we got to move him out of the way. Right. Absolutely. So the Q returns to the base, just returns the courier to the base. W tells the, uh, your courier to go to the secret shop, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is very useful. It's great. I didn't know you could, you could do that for a while. Oh, really? You can send the courier to the secret shop and have it buy items for you at yeah, the secret shop, absolutely. which is great. Can you do that with the side, with the side shop? Like the side lane shops? I would assume you I could. I would assume you could, but there's no 
command to make it go there. I don't know why you would necessarily need to. Yeah, because I have no reason for you to ever. Everything from the side shops can be bought at either the secret shop or the main shop. Right. The only reason that you might do that is if you stole the courier before it went back to the thing to make it more efficient or something. Cur- that's courier abuse, Jared. Cur- courier efficiency. Yes. Okay, so the next ability for the animal courier is... Uh, this is the one that's set to his E, return return items. So if the courier has items in his inventory, mm-hmm. it'll move them to your stash. Oh, that's so kind of neat. It'll move the items to your stash. I did not know about that. Yeah. Uh, D is retrieve items. It does the opposite, takes items from the stash, and puts them on the courier. So there's that. Right, right. And the next one is transfer items, which transfer uh, transfers items to the courier, or excuse me, transfers items to the heroes. So it'll tell the courier to come out to you and deliver items. That so th- this is inventory. the one where if you just hit the button to get your stuff, this is what the command actually is, correct? I think so. I'm not sure. I don't know if that's true or not. So it sounds like that's the deliver items, yeah, if you will. But I'm wondering if the deliver button does kind of a sequence. You know, if it retrieves items from the stash and then transfers them to you. Maybe. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. For what it's worth, I rarely ever hit those buttons. Yeah, the ones that I use for the courier specifically um, are the secret shop one. Yeah. Make it go to the secret shop to buy something. Mm-hmm. And then um, the one to return it home I do use. Yeah, that's what I do. Because and then it, I, let's just say that it's getting to a point where your courier is in danger or something. If you just hit that button right away, you can get it out of danger pretty easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, as we said earlier, the deliver items hotkey I use a lot as well. Right. Yeah, I'm the same way. And then there's also the speed burst. The courier gains a burst of speed for four seconds. It gets 650 movement speed on a 90-second cooldown. Yeah, so basically can outrun the heroes then. Right. Apparently, the courier used to have a shield. It makes the courier invulnerable for seven seconds on a, on a 20-second cooldown. Dang. So it was impossible to kill couriers. Yeah, jeez. That's crazy. So one of the other things we do want to talk about, since we have, we're talking about it here, if you kill the enemy courier, it's dead for three minutes. Correct. Any, any items that were on it, the, the enemy heroes cannot get for three minutes. And everybody gets 175 gold. It's really nice. It's nice. That's almost like killing a tower. Just about, actually. Yeah. So, Or it's close to killing Roshan, too. Yeah, 200. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. So be careful with that, folks. <laughs> actually, I think it's more than a, the Tier 1 towers now. I think Tier 1s are only 160. Mm. There you go. That's nice. Yeah. So kill the courier whenever you can. Heck yeah, man. So that's noob knowledge, Jared. Yeah. Any other thoughts on the, on the courier or courier controls? No, that was nice. Okay. Yeah. Good idea. Good yeah. idea. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jared, now uh, we come to the time in the program where yeah. we invite our friend Cheeks of Flappin back onto the show, and uh, we're gonna do some uh, some chatting with Cheeks here. All right, like it. we will shortly, just about. It's not playing, Jared. <laughs> why? Why is it not playing? There we go. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the dense and impenetrable web of systemic bullshit we collectively refer to as Dota. Hey, <laughs> I'm face palming right now. You really need to get a new I, interface. I need, for well, playing. I need to get the other program set yeah. up, the sports thing. The yeah, sports, it's sports talk or whatever, or just do the tablet. Yeah, I just haven't had time, Jared. All right, I'm a busy man. Anyway, cheeks, welcome back to the program. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be back. What are we chatting we about been... in the chat room? Oh, well, we've just been uh, talking about Axe, you know, where to use him, what he does, sort of a general consensus that he's just sort of an out-to-kill-everybody type of guy. Yeah, uh, pretty much. We are talking about, it's like, the uh, some people were like, well, maybe he could be sort of supporty, but then we're like, nah, he kind of needs more farm than that to be, to be really effective. Right. There's better supports so, than Axe. Yeah, yeah, much better supports than Axe. Uh, let's see... What else? I looked up his lore, which I thought was kind of interesting. It's oh, sort of his like, his lore is awesome. It's pretty good. He was just he just got so uh, obsessed with becoming a general of the Red Mist Army or whatever that he just worked so hard that he killed everybody. <laughs> so <laughs> he was the last one left. He went on a murdering streak. So, exactly, which is kind of what can happen in games sometimes. Right. Sometimes it's you true. find the whole team dead except for X, who's still out there. 
<laughs> I don't know. That sounds about right. I was also been, we've also been talking about uh, just about the use of uh, the courier. Talking okay. about courier controls and stuff like mm. that. And, yes. Uh, mentioned, uh, uh, let's see here. Let's see. DLT Budgie 29. Mm. Dolt Budgie 29. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, says one of his biggest pet peeves is when people uh, is people who insta speed boost the courier out of the base. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, because it just it's just a waste of the speed boost. Oh, uh, something else so. I was thinking of. I believe you can uh, shift Q commands on the courier. So like, uh, if somebody is getting their items delivered, if I hit Shift F two, that'll Q for the to deliver items to me next. Oh. But we have started no, to get decent on our team about trying to be efficient with the courier. So, like, Kyle will put his items on the courier. And I got to give Kyle credit. He does this all the time. He puts his items on the courier, and then he tells me to have my items delivered <laughs> to me so that it loads up the courier as well. Right. Mm-hmm. And we just, you know, we do one trip. Yeah. Courier yeah. efficiency. That's right. And I'm I'm more than willing to let carries or people who are getting those big game impact items to get them first before. Oh, yeah. I get whatever I need. I am not. It's just... <laughs> Instant satisfaction. That's right. That's well. That's why you got reported for courier abuse. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag reported. Hashtag reported. Uh, uh, let's see. I kind of lost a whole bunch of my chat because my chat crashed. Oh. oh no! I'm trying to think of what else. Some uh, some folks just stopped through. What's going on? The people in the chat were kind enough to. Tell them about the podcast and everything. Oh, great. To Hello. No reply from the people who were who stopped by. <laughs> yeah. so that I sounds about know. right. Welcome to Twitch. <laughs> yes. yeah, exactly. So I think it's interesting. Some people just popping in to sort of check stuff out. So okay. good, good, good. Uh, yeah. yeah. Welcome it good. everyone. It is good. This yes. is the Welcome. internet. Welcome all. Uh, Neil asked for some links to my lyrics from my music so he could decipher some themes, which he correctly <laughs> and accurately deciphered. So I was very proud of my lyric writing knowledge for that. Good work. Or skill, I guess. So I was like, oh, good. The lyrics aren't too ambiguous. And uh, Last Talon is saying that uh, stuns do not affect uh, Axe's counter helix. Thing. Wow. So, so I was right. That's crazy. Stuns. I did nailed I, it. I did not know yeah. that. Yeah, good job. Yeah. That is so annoying. Oh, that's, it's terrible. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's, why I, that's why I always want to ban him. Yeah. You can't stop that damn counter healer. So I guess, well, stuns don't stop passives, so that makes sense. Yeah, I guess that's true. So you got to be doing Doom with Ags, or that's about it, right? Yeah, because that's a mute. Yeah, because for uh, <laughs> Silencer with. Uh, no. No, what am I thinking here? I'm just thinking Doom with Ags. Yeah, and then... that's the only mute. Because uh, yeah. Chronosphere, Chronosphere used to it. mute, but it doesn't yeah. anymore. Oh, uh, I'm mm-hmm. thinking of Disruptor with Ags. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, no, that's, that's items. items. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, so Doom uh, Ags is the only thing that... Volvo, nerf Ags, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think that will be a, a nerf that we do see coming, honestly. Yeah. Okay, all right. So there you have it. <sighs> anyway... Well, hey, do you guys want some questions? Yes. Oh, um, yeah, I think I do, actually. Well, then, boy, do I have some questions for you. Hit it! Holy shit! If you want peace, you must prepare for war. If you want war, you must also prepare for war. The lesson is, always prepare for war! Always prepare for one. Timely bumper there. Timely, Timely bumper. Hey, we finally That's nailed it. Top. Yeah. Well, he actually let me hear the bumper this time. So. Right, right, right. I'm yeah. trying to get better about <laughs> sending those to you. I understand. All right. Well, let's get into some questions here. A friend of the show, Devin Ride, asks, what is wrong with Pipe of Insight? I've been buying this on Darkseer lately, and I think it's great. I literally never see anyone buying this item. If the other team has a de- decent amount of magical damage, I am buying it from here on out. Yeah, so he's it's a just good wondering item. why no one buys it. Uh, it's not I, sexy. It's not, and it's not something it's really that not. you uh, see the effects of very easily. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, totally. A pipe, good item. Yeah, really good. Uh, but yeah, you just don't see it. It's kind of expensive, and like Brian says, it's, it's not sexy. It's not something that you see. It's not like a, a necro book where you can f- see the physical thing. I mean, you can see yeah. that you're surrounded by a little green circle. 
but yeah, a little green cylinder. You're like putting a little green soda can or something. Right. <laughs> green you know, a soda can. Transparent green. Woo, Let me and ask you're like, you this. Oh, something's happening. Do you guys ever think we'll have cosmetic items for cosmetics? Like that'll like change the color of like Pipe of Insight or something like that? Or... Well, they already have some of those things. They have like, really? oh, you mean like actual, like the little, I was going to say like, you know, the teleportation. Yeah, cosmetics. that's true like that yeah and the blink effects and stuff like that yeah i think that i think that's kind of a major a major element you know like that mm. green well yeah those green circles are so yeah. uh distinctive and it's universal yeah, yeah. so yeah. like i can tell that the other team has a pipe activated yeah so i think yeah. that there's there's a fine line there that we have to be careful yeah. with where you you they want to be able to discern the enemy should be able to discern yeah, like yeah. what's going on. Yeah, like a blink effect. Mm. Ah, who cares? Right. A you teleport- still know they're blinking. Yeah. A teleportation, color, who or cares? animation. You know whatever. they're teleporting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Sorry for the sidebar there. <laughs> no, that's no, fine. That's but yeah, right. no, I, I definitely agree. I I love pipe. Um, I always build it on like a centaur. Oh yeah. It's so good. Uh, but yeah, I I don't know yeah. why it's not picked up more. I really don't. So just draft more magic, I guess, right? I guess. Yeah. You know, because no one buys it. So just, you know, exactly. Just draft all those casters, man. Well, because I all think right. people see a BKB and they think about themselves and only themselves. No, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Why worry about the team when you can worry about yourself? That's right. Absolutely. Which is, you know, kind of the motto but of Dota. <laughs> hype has, you get 13 <laughs> health regen from it. That's nice. So much, that's real nice. So much HP regen. Or it's nine, excuse me. Is that from the aura or for yourself? That's for yourself. Okay. All right. That's nice. (laughs) All right. Next question. All right. Next question. Let's see. This is from a friend of the show, CG Doozy, who says, I recently played a themed tournament, fire team versus ice team, nature team versus Mm. arcane magic team, and it was so much fun. But which awesome. team would be the most OP? What sort of draft would be the most overpowered draft? Oh, gosh. That's a tough one. Well, initially, my, my thought would be the magic team. But then all you have to do is buy a BKB and pipe. Yeah. And it kind of negates that. Right. Um, yeah. Physical damage team, you buy Crimson Guard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. I think uh, a fire team would yeah, be hard. I don't know. Fire team might be hard. Yeah, that burning they're, damage. They're a little more balanced, right? Because yeah. you can have like Doom, Ember Spirit, Lena, right? And Clinks. Lena has, you know, if you get Ags, it does a pure damage as opposed to yeah. magical. Yeah. You can get Jakiro with his Liquid Fire. Yeah. And that's you know. It's... And Jakiro OP uh, draft pick there because he can fit into two different teams. Exactly. Yes. That's exactly. true. No, I don't know because he only really does ice. Path. He has a lot more fiery things. I feel like. Yeah, macro fire. No, he has dual, dual breath. breath. Yeah, and liquid fire. Well, no, but that still has that has. So that's you've got three fires against two ices. Mm. So he's a fire. It's close, but ice path is so good. I know ice path is very good. Ice path but I'm just good. saying he has more fire than he does ice. Yeah, I'll give you that. But yeah, unless I don't know. when that's... when and unless when uh, let's see, what's that big macro pyre thing at the end of it? Everybody froze who was still standing it at the end of it. Oh, then that would be more balanced. Hey. Think yeah, about that. That's tough to answer. I would think a draft that is like the most balanced and non gimmicky, I think, would be the best team out there. I think a forest draft would be kind of fun. The forest draft. Yeah. P Frog's yeah, uh, the forest, forest draft. draft. It's pretty mm-hmm. good. Yeah. But I mean, what would be like OP, though? Would like a stuns draft be OP? <laughs> Well, it feels yeah, like I stuns guess. are pretty. When you're up against a bunch of stuns and you don't have any stuns, it feels pretty overpowering. That's true. Yeah. Stun locking yeah. is crazy. Yeah, like a stun and slow team or something. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not really sure how to answer that one. Yeah, it's it's tough. There's so many combinations, so many different themes you could do. But we all know that Team Purple is the most OP team. Team Purple is a good draft. It's Purple team is very, pretty fun. Yes, pretty pretty big draft. <laughs> all right, let's see. Let's get on to another question here. Sure thing. Uh, yeah, sure thing. All right, here we go. So, Schism Punk, friend of the show, Schism Punk asks, Yes. How do you guys have your item hotkeys set up? I just started using Quick Cast based on Waga's suggestions, but I'm still fumbling with my item hotkeys when I have more than three targetable active items. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 
I still have mine set to the to the defaults of Z, X, C, V, B, and N. Usually, you're crazy. That's insane. Yeah, that is well. Nuts. Usually, I put the ones that have like passes on B and N, or like the wards or something like that. If I'm right. doing support, okay. Mm-hmm. I always set my town portal scroll to V. I always put my boots on C. Mm-hmm. And then, like generally, I'm wound up. I wind up with two other actives, which would be on Z and X. So yeah. I'm not quite doing the finger aerobics that one would think. Right. Do you but, guys use quick cast at all? I do not. I do not either. I was thinking about starting using it on Blink and stuff, just because I had no idea what it was. It was a bit of noob knowledge for me. Yeah, because it, when you activate, if you have Quick Cast on, it just uses it wherever your mouse cursor is, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which I think for Blink would be totally rad, or even Force. Well, maybe not Force Staff. No, not Force Staff. That'd be terrible. <laughs> but yeah, I think I would Unless fat finger stuff to. too much. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I already fat finger stuff too much. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> I'm telling like you, the ultimate key ultimates. binding is. Is is spacebar? <laughs> oh, this I think is the ultimate panic key. You can't miss. I think spacebar is a good key to bind. I'm yeah. It I don't is. think my key bindings are super efficient, but it's what you're used. It's to. what I'm used to, and it's what I like. I I still like it. That's so, fair. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I uh, I have a uh, mouse with three side buttons on my thumb, so mm-hmm. I have three of my uh, actives I normally use um, on those three. So, like, I usually put my Blink Dagger, um, you know, Dust, anything like that, I put over on those three. And then my other three I have on W, C, and R. Yes. Well, because I use the... <laughs> I, I go ASDF for my... Uh, yeah, I know, which is insane, too. I, so they're just close <laughs> to those keys. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, yeah my abilities I, I have on... The F bump. For some reason, that reminds me of Tribes Two. Okay. When it was a shooter, right? And W A S D are standard controls for shooters, right? Tribes did E S D F. Oh man! So that, oh, that sounds terrible. And I remapped them <laughs> immediately. Work. Yeah. But their reasoning was it, and I don't disagree. It gives you more keys. It that absolutely are does. It absolutely of, does. Because shift, caps lock, and tab are a little weird. Well, the they're thing... nice keys, but they do weird stuff in Windows sometimes. Right, yeah. That's true. That's true. I don't know. There you have it. But yeah, so that's mine. Three mouse keys, W, C, R. Very good. See, I, tried, I, have, I have two mouse keys on the side of my mouse, on the side of my Steel Series, but I'm still too nervous to bind to the second one because I know I just fat finger those. <laughs> so good old fat finger. I usually just keep... I keep one on the side, and then I keep my space bar, or like the two, and then the, you know, so I only try and worry about two active items, really. All right, that's fair. Yeah. You know, and then and then something like mana boots, I'll usually put like on V or C or something like that. Right. Or, yeah. or mech, I'll try and put on T, but then I'll totally forget about it. Right. Most of right. The time. <laughs> yeah. See, that's and then I'll switch it to space bar. Exactly. I always I always put for some reason my urn on R. So like I always, if I have anything else there, just and I have an urn, it just always messes me up. Well, I think it's worth right. noting that we all kind of have these setups of, I mean, they're kind of based around muscle memory. Like what's absolutely, worked, yeah. What's mm-hmm. what has worked best for us? Right. And I think the more you can get that stuff into muscle memory, you know, Jared, you said you always put your th- your urn on R. Right. You always know your urn's going to be there. You right. don't even have to think about it when you're ready to use it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So exactly. All right. What else do you got for us, cheeks? All right, I got one more question here for this week uh, from An Evil Donkey, friend of the show, An Evil Donkey. Ah, yes. <laughs> so here we go. I know you are researching the performance-enhancing effects of THC in your teammates, of course, but Maker's Mark is my preferred consumable while Oh, gaming. yeah. Okay. What is your drink of choice to pair with a night of fine Dota? Oh, Bonus boy. if you can whip up a Dota-themed cocktail on the fly. Oh. I wouldn't want to whip up a Dota themed cocktail. That'd be weird. Yeah. I got a Dota themed cocktail. All right. What what is your Dota themed right cocktail? Jeez. All right, here it is. It's the it's the immortal axe is what I call it. And what you have <laughs> is you have a shot of gold schlager. Perfect. Uh, because it's with, gold. Uh, code red mountain dew. All right. <laughs> and fireball whiskey. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't sound there half bad. Go. That's the immortal That's axe. That's impressive. Right there. That's impressive. Yeah. Goldschlager always kind makes me feel like I'm time kind of traveling. Burning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the flakes of gold in it, too. It reminds me of uh, 
Axe's immortal mask thing, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> um, what are your beverage choices, Jared? Uh, I normally uh, steer towards gin-based drinks. Oh, yeah. So um, the one I usually go with is cranberry uh, ginger ale and uh, gin. And I, that's bl- it. I believe you call that the uh, the summer cocktail? Well, summertime, is uh, that's cranberry juice ginger ale and uh either vodka or gin so what way. what is yours just cranberry ginger ale which is seasonal oh okay right and then uh w- but we buy a lot of it because okay. i really like it yeah but yeah if i have gin in the house cranberry ginger ale man yeah or just regular ginger ale right so uh for me i'm i am all over the place yeah i believe it it depends it depends one on how i'm feeling okay if i if i'm not feeling well I'll have tea or water. Okay. But if I, I feel just fine, which is most nights, yeah. if I feel just fine, uh, I'm all over the place. I, I like beer. Last night I had a delicious black IPA, 21st Amendment, back in black. Always a good choice. Go-to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also going to be brewing up a, uh, a batch of that on my own here yeah. pretty soon. Uh, wine is also very common for me. I'm a big wino. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> let's see. Last night well, I, you, had, you had a podcast at one time about wine. I did, yeah. Made the front of the BG News, Jerry. That's right. Made the front. That's right. College newspaper worthy. That's right. Or if I'm drinking <laughs> cocktails, um, big fan of the uh, of the bourbon. Huge fan of the bourbon. Yeah, yeah. I like to just drink that like on the rocks, or if I'm feeling frisky, I'll make an old fashioned. Mm, always a good choice. Uh, but if we're talking about gin based drinks, I well, first of all, I only keep bourbon and gin as far as uh, liquors go in my house. Okay. That's I fair. don't want to drink anything that doesn't have those in it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I gravitate, if I'm drinking whiskey, more towards scotch than bourbon. Um, that's mm. just yeah. me. But I, I, I love Manhattans, so obviously, oh, yeah. you know, bourbon always. But I think I've actually found that I prefer uh, bourbon to scotch, Jared. But that's just if me. We're, if we're just talking either neat or on the rocks, I prefer scotch. Yeah, that's fine. But with gin, I really like a good Tom Collins, mm, mm. which has uh, lemon juice, some simple syrup, and gin in it. Yeah, you once made a the what we call the rosemary Collins. Yes, where you put uh, some rosemary infused simple syrup oh, in there. Sweet Jesus, that was good. Or I like a good mint julep. I love mint juleps. Yeah. Or the French seventy five, well, Jared, which is a Tom mm-hmm. Collins. What about with what a little about wine port what about what about Dota themed cocktails? I've got two more. If you guys don't have, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's hear them. I want to hear the Dota themed cocktails. Bring them in. Bring them in, man. Okay, so the Crystal Maiden would be Uzo. And uh, crystal clear Pepsi. <laughs> okay. That's an expensive the, one. Uh, tree Amp Protector, which would be, uh, let's see here, Cuddy Sark and Green River. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Cuddy Sark. Cuddy Sark isn't that bad. <laughs> it's lighter fluid, Jared. No, it, a little bit. <laughs> a little That's bit. kind of its charm. My dad, my dad drinks Cuddy Sark. Are you a lot, serious? So, yeah. Lonnie drinks Cuddy Sark. No, yeah, he always oh, has man. like a half gallon of it hanging out. Jeez. And then the Necrophos, which would be uh, Mountain Dew and Absinthe. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that'd be about right. I'm glad you're here. Your creative thinking on the fly really saved us with that one. Yeah. I could, yeah, no I problem. could talk about booze all day. Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm sure you could. Yeah. I uh I generally <laughs> responsibly enjoy booze. I just really enjoy uh, ingesting it and creating it. That's true. Making it. So there's that. So so I wanted to make a little announcement. Since we're uh, next weekend, we're probably going to be doing a, a recording a bonus episode to air when Brian's in Europe. Yes, I'm so going to be are, in Europe. We're talking about. Oh, I'm going to be in Europe from March 16th through the 29th. How fun! So I think we're going to take one week off in between there. Uh, Mm -hmm. But we are going to air the Noobs Ask Noobs special, as Cheeks was describing. So continue on with that. Sorry, I cut you off. That's fine. (laughs) So if you want to meet up with Brian in Europe, just uh, check with his wife. (laughs) You're not allowed to meet up with me in Europe. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, we're going to be doing a Noobs Ask Noobs episode that we're going to air the following week uh, when he is indeed abroad. Not abroad, but you know, in Europe. Abroad, abroad, not a. Uh, not a broad, abroad. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, so we're gonna we're we're looking for questions on that noobs ass noobs thread. So just put all the questions you got: life questions, Dota Anything. questions, 
That's right. And we're, we're looking up to fill up some time with that. So yep. just a big question cast. So be sure to add them there. It'll be and a fun I think one. Maybe, yeah, it'll be, it'll be pretty good. We won't be giving away a game for that one because it won't be, you know, live, I guess. Or I guess we could do it, couldn't we? I guess we, I don't know. We'll figure something out. We'll figure that out. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, we need to give away this copy of Magicka. Yeah, we do. So, let me reach inside my hat here. Had a lot of questions <laughs> uh, submitted this week. Thanks to everybody. You guys have been blowing it up on the uh, Noobs Ass Noobs thread. So, reaching in my hat, pulling around here, the fingers, reaching in, grabbing a slip of paper, pulling it out. And the name is... Devin Ride. Oh, Devin Ride. All right. Congratulations, oh. Devin Ride. Magica. You're a winner. There you go. So Devin Ride will probably have to remind me what his Steam name is so I can send him the thing. But yeah. So and remember when you when you uh, enter a uh, noobs ask noobs question on our Reddit, uh, you are submitted in the drawing for that week's copy of whatever we're giving away. I think next week we're going to give away a copy. Of Laura Croft and the the Tomb Raider, uh, what's the one that's sort of the three chord isometric view one? Uh, that was came, Guardians sort of, of the Arc. Light. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's what Something it is. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. We'll be giving away a copy of that wow. next week. I think. I so hear good things about that cool. game. And yes. it uh, it is worth noting that your question does not need to be read on air to win. That yeah, is it true. doesn't have to. You just have to submit a question. But please put a little thought into your question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I think uh, I think that brings us to the to the end of the program. Uh, Cheeks, you want to tell mm-hmm. us where we can find you online? You can find me at Cheeks Flappin on Twitter. You can find me at Cheeks Flappin on Instagram. You can find me on PSN as Cheeks. That's C C H H E E E E K K S S. And on Xbox Live, so great. Cheeks Flappin. And on Steam, Cheeks Flappin. Perfect. What about you, Jared? Uh, you can follow me if you're interested in the uh, the under CD underground of the uh, Dota 2 gambling world. Uh, um, on We Like Dota Bets, I'm going to be putting some stuff out there about the uh, pre-qualifiers for uh, Summit 3. Mm. It's going to be kind of fun. So The pre-qualifiers we'll that, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The streamlined, the streamlined thing yes. of uh, the Summit 3, which starts with the pre-qualifiers. Correct. You can Seriously. you can find me online at b yinger b y i n g e r also on Instagram under the same name. You can follow We Like Dota on Twitch, YouTube, uh, Reddit, and Twitter. I was trying to think of the last one. A <laughs> uh, lot of activity going on over at the subreddit, so definitely check that Absolutely. out if you want to get involved in our Dota Two Guild or our Steam community. Uh, yeah, and I've noticed I've noticed an uptick in downloads lately. So if you're new to the show, welcome. Thanks for listening. Yeah, seriously. Tell somebody about the show. Or don't. Or don't. That's fine, too. Yeah. Um, but we'd appreciate it if you did. Right. And speaking of, you also can support our show if uh, you're interested via the Patreon, which you can find more information about uh, at our website, welikedota.com. There's a link at the top. You can follow that. Just a way that you can kind of give back to us and... Uh, yeah, yeah, just kind of help support the show. You'd be surprised how far $5 a month can go. Absolutely. Or if you only have $2, that's fine, too. Absolutely. Whatever you have to give, we definitely appreciate. So it, It's appreciated, and uh, yeah. Yeah, our uh, theme music is brought to, you, brought to us by Michael Edwards of the Sunrise Robot Network. Absolutely. So big Congratulations thanks. to them oh, to yeah. uh, getting on to it. Uh, a network of yeah. you, podcasting, if you will. Yeah, so. they uh, they launched their whole own thing every over there. They have like a, they've got a pretty big uh, undertaking over there. So. Good for them. So good for those guys. So thanks a lot. Blah. Sorry, I I cannot <laughs> talk today, Jerry. It's been it's been a rough one for yeah. everyone. So okay, thanks a lot for listening, everybody, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>